Welcome to Assembly Calendar. I'm Ted Flint. With us today, Assemblyman Al Graff, who serves the 5th Assembly District, which includes Suffolk County. Assemblyman Graff, nice to see you. You too. Thank you. Middle of March, right in the height of the budget season, and a lot of meetings as we record this program today, uh, as we get close to that April 1st budget deadline. Just bring us up to, give us a brief synopsis of where we are. Well, we're taking a look at the budget right now, and uh, we debated the minorities budget the other day. It was put out by the majority in the Assembly. And, oh, excuse me, the majority's budget in the assembly. And to say it was disappointing is they didn't put enough into the gap elimination. They, uh, there were no funding in there for restoring the beds in Sagamore Children's Psychiatric Hospital. These are children that are depressed. These are children that have psychological problems. They have, uh, you know, a lot of issues. And mm -hmm. what they're trying to do is ship them instead of leaving, leaving them on Long Island where their families can be part of their, their uh, treatment. They want to ship them into the Bronx and they want to ship them into Queens. Understand, mm -hmm. half of these kids are put in there through the family court mm -hmm. because of different uh, mental issues that they may have. And, um, I mean, it's like stepping over a dollar to pick up a dime because we're going to have to pay to transport them into Queens, into the Bronx, and transport them back to court. And it's just, it's a foolish cut. Mm -hmm. So, but this governor is known for that. And uh, now, they didn't put it in the budget on the majority side in the at assembly. All. At, at all. all. It mm -hmm. wasn't funded. So I had to debate that to say, look, you need to have this in the budget. The other thing that they did is you have Obamacare, now we have Cuomo Care. And it's going to, that, the exchanges that we never voted on as a legislature, he put in the, um, as executive fiat, that's going to cost us $53.4 million. And he's having the same problem as Obamacare, in that the younger people are not joining the exchanges. So he keeps saying, don't worry, it'll be self-funding by 2015. Next year we'll hear, don't worry, it'll be self-funding by 2016. <laughs> And then probably, don't worry, it'll be self-funding. You know what? The bottom line, it was a bad idea on the federal level. It's even a worst idea on this level. And I have people screaming, doctors screaming, that the reimbursement is far too low. Mm -hmm. They're not taking yeah. the patients anymore. They're forming boutique types of medicine where you pay in and they'll see you. You have um, pharmacists that are saying that the, the drugs they're dispensing cost more than what the reimbursement rate mm -hmm. is, okay? So again, it's it's a mess. Well, the governor unveiled his budget proposal uh, recently. We'll have your comments. We'll look at your comments, and we'll come back, and we'll talk further with Assemblyman Al Graff. A lot of it was interesting. A lot of it was, how's he going to pay for it? And there are a couple of problems. He's not listening, again, is we're talking about pre-K or full-time pre-K. The problem is that some schools have a half a day kindergarten, or some schools have a, no kindergarten. So what are we going to do? Put them in pre-K for full time, then the next year put them half a day kindergarten or no kindergarten. Um, they talked about um, improving our medical systems with Medicaid, but what I'm hearing from doctors, the improvements that they've made, they're actually closing their offices, they're selling their practices, and they're going into hospitals. All right, or they're, they're actually forming little groups where you, know, you have to buy into their group in order to see them, so they're not going to be taking the insurance. There's a lot of programs that he mentioned that I looked, you know, I looked at and I said, okay, but there's a lot where there's a lot of holes in here that he has to fill in the holes. As far as the Common Core was concerned, right, he finally mentioned it. It's like he just woke up and discovered that our kids are getting hurt with Common Core, but there's a lot that we have to talk about, and we're going to be talking about that real soon. So there were some positive things, but a lot of holes in this budget, but I tend to expect that from this governor. All right, we'll talk about Common Core in a few minutes. We want to get to, uh, on the education front, Regents selection, and that was done last week. Uh, you're not happy with the region selection, I take it? Well, we actually interviewed 19, 20 people, and uh, we were brought into the system to actually talk to them. And what happened is the rollout of Common Core has been a disaster. Nobody will say that the rollout has been perfect or even close to perfect right. or even good. And what happened is when we were interviewing them, I, I looked at some of the regions and I said, listen, if 
you know, you were the coach of my football team and you've performed this miserably, I'd fire you. Why would I reappoint you? Well, what happened was there was a lot of posturing this week or last week, and we had the vote on the regents. But now we have everybody focused on the vote of the region. Usually it was just the one side of the assembly would put four people in. Everybody, the Senate would not even come in. They'd boycott it. We'd vote no. Okay? And they'd ram these people through. Well, this time we put up the four best candidates. We looked through the candidates. We put up the four best candidates. The majority, what they did is they renominated three of the regions that made a mess out of this. It gave us Common Core, right. basically. Oh, yeah. They made a mess out of the rollout. They made a mess out of everything. They put the three of them back because they had the numbers to do it. And then they had one guy resign so that they can say, look, we didn't put back all of the incumbents. But what they did do is they found this woman at the last moment, okay? And uh, the day after, they basically when we interviewed her, when I asked her questions, and others asked her questions, her attitude was, if you want to find out what I think, then put me on the Board of Regents. And they did, okay? And now it comes out the next day that she is a psychic, spiritual, weight loss advisor, <laughs> charging over $3,000. And you, you'd have to look at it. She's not exactly a small woman, okay? You can't make this stuff up. And her website came down because it had all misspellings on it and everything else, and now it says under constructions with an S. Mm. This is the woman that's going to be in charge of education mm. for mm. the next mm. five years. She's one of the regents. For, yeah, five-year terms. Yeah. And it's like, hello, stop playing politics when it comes to our children. You have to put our children before politics. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the regents' nomination, some of the debate on the floor. When some of Assemblyman Graff's comments, and we'll come back and speak further with Assemblyman Al Graff. I'd like to put in for nomination Michael Riley. Mr. Riley is a retired New York City police officer. He presently has children in the school system. He's a, an Army veteran, and he presently serves on the New York City Community Education Council, number 31. He has been involved in school safety. Uh, he has coordinated safety and, and cyberbullying workshops. He's involved in the YMCA on Staten Island. This is an individual who's a parent, and I think that we need a parent on the, uh, the regents at this time. Furthermore, with all the incidences of violence surrounding our schools, and uh, unfortunately, we turn on the news every day, and we see that our, our young children are in harm's way sometimes when they're going to, the, uh, going to class. I believe Mr. Riley, with his experience, he was a lieutenant on the police department. He rose to the rank of lieutenant. And I believe his experience in making sure that schools are safe making sure that children are protected is something that is, is really needed today when we're facing, you know, providing a safe environment. When we're, we have a, looking for a safe environment for our children. So I would ask everyone in this chamber to vote for Mr. Riley and vote for the safety of our children. Sounds eminently qualified, but uh, didn't make it. No, qualifications didn't matter. You know, yeah. basically it was pure politics. They put back the, uh, the three sitting regents because they could, and they put this other woman in, that's, and none of these people are, are qualified. We mm -hmm. put up four very qualified, the most qualified candidates, okay? And they just went back and did what they always did. Mm -hmm. But now it's shining a light on this, how regents are selected. And I'm hoping that people out there take offense to something like That's this. It. Because educa the education of our children is not something you want to play with. Right. 
Uh, on the Common Core, there were a, it was a very busy couple of weeks here with education. Uh, the Republican Conference introduced an amendment to the bill that eventually passed. Uh, the amendment came up a little short. You want to set this up? We have you well, talking we about Well, we put it. an amendment in, and what the amendment would do is actually stop, okay, the, uh, the implementation of Common Core. It would create a blue ribbon panel. It would look at what we found out. It would look at curriculum. It would look at child development. It would look how t children uh, were doing in school and how to best serve their needs. And it was pretty, pretty comprehensive. And it's, you can look at the bill. It's still online there, um, 8844. Mm -hmm. And what we did was put that bill in to supplement the majority's bill, which is 8929. And that bill there, it says it's a common core bill, but it's self-defeating within the first paragraph hmm. because basically what it says is that the, um, the bill, first they have to put in for waivers and they have to get the waivers. Yeah. So with that, if they don't have, the, it doesn't start until they receive the waivers from the federal government. And then the other language in there basically could have been said that this is a bill if it's okay with the Commissioner of Education, and he's done a deplorable mm. job up to date. He's the problem behind yeah. this. He keeps pushing, and he doesn't get it. And they keep saying that the pro you know, they have a communication problem. They don't have a communication problem. People hear what they say, but they don't like what they're saying, right? Yeah. And they have a listening problem. Let's look at your comments on the amendment on the floor of the assembly. Then we'll come back and wrap things up with Assemblyman Al Gore, uh, Al, Al Graf, excuse me. Wow. Many of our <laughs> school districts have reached out to us. I had one school district on Long Island where they've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to implement the uh, testing, and they only received $3,000 in funding. So much of the money that they talk about with the federal government actually stayed with the state Department of Education and it didn't make it down to our schools. So when we have our schools that are struggle, struggling right now and they see cuts in education, it would be inappropriate for us not to address this and not take this, this uh, monkey off the backs of our school districts. Further, in, this, in Bill 8844, we do put in there and authorize the Department of Education to put in for waivers. So they can put in for waivers to the federal government while we examine this. Now, originally, when the federal government put in this uh, outline of the standards that we were supposed to be implementing, we had the opportunity to fill in those standards. Unfortunately, like New York always does, they screwed it up. They bought curriculum that basically is not age appropriate. It's not developmentally appropriate. It uh, basically, if you look at the curriculum, if you go on to Engage New York, this curriculum is grammatically incorrect. They tell students to, to shade it, you know, pick out the trees, and there are no trees. I can't believe we actually paid taxpayers money to buy this curriculum. So, uh, yeah, not a lot of good with Common Core, I guess, according to a lot of, a lot of folks. And another round of testing, by the way, April, April 1st, oh, yeah. right? Well, they're going to find out that, you know, the uh, majority is sitting here going, we're pausing it. We're pa they're not pausing anything. And what's going to happen is I don't understand why they're saying that. Because what's going to happen, the kids are going to start being tested in April. Nothing's going to change. The homework's going to be the same. The curriculum's going to be the same, okay? They're not going to move things forward. Yeah. So right now it's in the Senate's hands. I mean, we've been fighting this battle for six months. We put everything out there. We put out an Apple plan that everybody yeah. loves to ha how to, uh, to roadmap, roadmap how to fix education. We're about out of time. You, uh, the, uh, the bill that, the, um, the, uh, that, did, that failed the amendment uh, has a Senate sponsor. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Senator Zeldin yeah. has it at 6604. Oh. And, you know, it's not, it, the bill is still there. Yep. It just, they wouldn't put it up as an amendment. You know what? They've got to stop playing politics with our children. That's got to be the last word. Assemblyman Al Graf, nice to see you again. Keep up the good work. Thanks for joining us on this edition of Assembly Calendar. We'll see you soon. I'm Ted Flint.